That was helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Grafted. I'm Tom and this is Sam and we are both elders at a Messianic congregation. Yeah, and for this special Passover resurrection season, we're going to be looking and reacting to clips of the parting of the Red Sea. So there's a cool uh, connection here because they just you know, they had Passover, right? Right, And the killing of the lamb. Mm -hmm. And then this very well could be three days later hmm. that now, because the journey to the Red Sea. Right, okay. there was this journey a couple days later, mm -hmm. I would say almost for sure, but the text isn't clear. Yeah. In Hebrew it says, leaf ne boker, just before the morning. Oh which is a similar time of the resurrection wow. where now the, they get delivered through right. the Red Sea or there's this resurrection, this new life that's yeah. presented well, yeah. to them. You the, know? the New Covenant scriptures talk about it being this, this baptism. This is the moment. This like is this it. is this is the deliverance. Right. Like yeah. everything was leading up to this moment of where right. you will no longer be in bondage in Egypt, and when you come right. out on the other side, you are yeah. free. Yeah, it's First Corinthians ten. It says that the Israelites were baptized yeah. into Moses mm -hmm. at the Red Sea. Right. So this is this, this new is life yeah. that's happening. Uh, so it's kind of a big deal, <laughs> right? <laughs> but you can see why it's it's paralleling though. Mm -hmm. Everything is is this foreshadowing mm -hmm. and then giving us context to what? The yeah. later story in Yeshua, so dramatic, just like life from the dead is so yeah. dramatic. So I do like the drama. Oh, yeah. With this staff, you shall do my wonders. I mean, that looks incredible. <laughs> Can you imagine the wall on each side? Well, that's cool. To that. All right, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> In there? <laughs> yeah. You got the Egyptians behind you. I, I think you're like a bunch of fire. A little bit of encouragement, you, you I think. Yeah, you're being pushed. Yeah. You know, it's like riding a bike when you're a kid. Your dad's like, I'm going to let you go now. I love that. I think it's beautiful. I think it's amazing. Not accurate. What was not accurate about? <laughs> well, I mean, the, the, it took all night mm. for the waters to be parted mm -hmm. and for there to be dry ground, right? No less incredible, no less amazing, right. but, you know, it wasn't like this mm -hmm. instantaneous waters parted, now let's go. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a strong was east wind or something that blew mm -hmm. all night long and parted mm -hmm. the waters, you know? Right. And so, uh, like I said, no less miraculous, mm -hmm. like no less miraculous. Right. Plus, this whole pillar of fire thing separating the Egyptian army from them, mm -hmm. incredible. Mm -hmm. Like, that, that'll boost your confidence. I like to point out here too, it's like, what did they do to deserve that? I mean, it's, it's still salvation by grace, by grace. through faith. It's I mean, they, they still had to believe they, they still had to do something, right? Yeah. They had to accept it. They had to put blood on their door. Yep. They had to leave, they had to walk mm -hmm. out of Egypt. But mm -hmm. what did they do to deserve that? They didn't do anything to deserve him parting no. the Red Sea or delivering them from Egypt. Yeah. It's just because he is this gracious, loving God and he's faithful to his covenants. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> it's been so long. <laughs> I don't oh, want to laugh. I don't, don't want to laugh. That was as good as they could do. I mean, I don't know how to do even that on our videos. Matt, can you put some flames on our... <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like we would be going slow to get across there. I've thought about this before. because yeah. I mean, I've led tours to Israel. <laughs> and with 25 people, people are slow. <laughs> <laughs> Who shall withstand the power of God? Amazing that not only did the waters cover them, but 
You saw, I saw one of the chariots fall, right? And it reminded me of the passage where it's, it's talking about they're pursuing them and then all of a sudden the Lord starts fighting for them and their wheels of their chariots are coming off mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Like they're, right. they're already being thrown into turmoil and confusion. Mm-hmm. It's like there's the fire. Right. There's the, you know, there's the parting of the waters mm-hmm. and then their chariots are falling apart and then they get covered with the water. It's like he's just... He's just saving and saving and saving and saving. Right. That's amazing. Who is like unto thee, O Lord? Mm. From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. He's, they're referencing that passage where he says, Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Yeah. And mm. Who is like you? Mm. So, I mean, this is, Me come I mean, very much, what do we have but the defeat of the gods of Egypt, right? It right. says. Right. Like, so they're yeah. just his power is on display and the reality that their gods are nothing mm-hmm. in comparison to our God. Right. And that same passage it says that, that the Lord is a man of war. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like it actually says a man of war. That that Adonai is a man of war, which I think is a cool connection with Yeshua is the one actually who is fighting the battles for them. Mm -hmm. Yeshua was in the midst of the burning bush. Mm -hmm. You know, you have the the angel of the Lord who is showing up to them and who actually leads them and guides them uh, in the wilderness even. Yep. But delivering them, Mm -hmm. uh, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. This part is not in the Bible, Sam. Correct. I don't know what's going to happen, but this is not in the Bible. It looks really cool, though. (laughs) They're in the middle as it's the water's crashing in on them. This is really dramatic. This is epic. Confused. I'm very confused. How's Moses gonna I get don't out? Know. <laughs> yeah, I mean the accuracy of that was probably at a minimum, but Pharaoh's like his his like the way he was just determined to just go after was like so demonically charged. Right. You know, and I mean that's to me that part was probably pretty accurate. Mm-hmm. He was so demonically influenced and charged to, to try to destroy right. Israel that it didn't matter that there were two walls of water right. on either side. We're going in after him, yeah. right? It's like right. strategic decision failure. Right. You know, take my army in a right. two-walled water area that that's not supposed to be that way. You know, like, so just the demonic mm-hmm. manifestation Good. there. Water is so powerful, right? Moses is not going to die. Logic got thrown out the window a long time ago. He should have stopped after maybe the first few plagues. Right. But he kept doubling down and doubling down, even though it was like decimating his kingdom. And so, yeah, yeah. the only answer to that is there's got to be something spiritual, evil, demonic that's taking place. So that's a good point. So they, they portrayed that part really well. That part was good. Yeah. <laughs> the part that was definitely not accurate was Moses meeting him in the middle yeah. and then being swept away with the water. Thanks for watching. Please help us make more videos like this. You can partner with us tax-free by clicking down here. And if you want to watch our other video on Moses in film, click right here. <laughs> Why did he grab his spear like that? Storms are brewing though, Paul. <laughs> Christian Bale's mustaches are brewing. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha